In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your Logic Pro for iPad Project so you can share it as an audio file with the world. Let's go. Here on the Logic Pro main screen, go to the project name in the top left corner and tap on that one now. Hit the export button. If you're happy with the default settings, all you need to do is hit the share button in the top right corner and it will bounce your project down, which simply means grabbing all the different tracks and combining them together and exporting them as one individual audio file. Once that's complete, you'll be presented with the share sheet where you can send it to another app or the easiest thing to do is hit the save to files button and choose where you would like to save that audio file. I'm going to select the iCloud drive and then one thing to keep in mind is you can't actually save in the Logic Pro for iPad folder where your projects reside. So all I've done here is created a new folder called Logic Pro for iPad exports and I'm going to hit save in that folder that saved that audio file ready to use. To locate that file I'm simply going to swipe up from the bottom of the screen and go to the files app and then I can then navigate to iCloud drive, go into the Logic Pro for iPad exports and there is our WAV file. If we tap on that one, it's ready to play. What if you want to change some of the settings for your export? Well, all you need to do is go back to the export screen and start adjusting these. Let's go through these options one by one. First up, you can change the name. So say you wanted to put in here version 1.0 or change the name of the export file. You can do that there. Then when you hit share, it'll save it as that name. You can export either the entire project length or you can choose a start and an end position. So you can dial in here the bar position and even the beat of the start and the finish if you want it to only go to a certain spot. Next, you can choose the file type between uncompressed or compressed. Now, I recommend uncompressed for pretty much every application. It'll give you the full high definition, high resolution audio file. If we select compressed instead, that's going to give us a smaller file, which could be handy if you wanted to say email to someone, but more often than not, you want the uncompressed option. To access more options, for the file type, we can tap on this eye icon over here on the right and we can choose between an AIFF or a WAV file. I recommend WAV files. They just tend to be compatible with everything you're going to use them with, but it's a personal preference. They're very similar. They're both full resolution. You can also choose your resolution here between 24-bit or 16-bit. I'd leave it on 24 unless you have a reason. You've got a platform that only supports 16-bit and your sample rate, it'll be your default project rate here. In this case, 44.1 kilohertz. It can go all the way up to 96 kilohertz. If that means nothing to you, I would just leave it at 44.1. If we choose a compressed file format, we can also adjust the file settings. The only file type is M4A. Now, if you need an MP3, you'll need to export as a WAV and then convert it. I've got a video showing you how to do that in iOS right there and down in the description. You can also change between either AAC or ALAC. Lossless just means that it uh, uses more storage space, but you get a better quality. So if the storage space doesn't matter, choose lossless. But if we go with AAC, you can select between 64 all the way up to 320 kilobits per second. That's going to be the quality. So I wouldn't go with anything under about 192 and choose 320 if you can. But again, the higher you go, the bigger the file. And finally, you can encode with a VBR or a variable bit rate. So this will adjust the bit rate based on the audio file you're using. Just may save you a bit of space. I would say in this day and age, you don't need to worry too much about that. And again, I strongly recommend using uncompressed for pretty much every export that you're going to be doing. And finally, we have the processing details. If we tap on this one, we've got include audio tail. Now, this means that when you get to the end of a track, if there's a reverb or a delay, a tail on the end of your audio, even if it's cut off, so even if you're at the end of that particular region, it will give you a little bit of extra until that tail is completed. You can choose that on or off. Normalization. This is auto normalization. Now, this is one of the best benefits of Logic Pro over GarageBand is that you can turn this off. I recommend having it off. The only time you want this on is if you've got quieter audio and you don't want to do any mastering. You want it to go right up to zero dB, which is the highest volume without clipping, then by all means turn that on. You can also use overload protection only, which means it will only auto normalize if it's going to be clipping. If the song overall is going to be too loud, that can protect it. But to be honest, you'll see that your song is clipping in Logic Pro and you'll want to mix it so that it's not because the auto normalization 
will make the audio do that horrible pumping sound and you don't want that. So my recommendation is turn that off and then use the videos here on the channel to learn how to use Logic Pro to mix your songs so that they sound great and you can export them without normalization. And finally, we've got include master effect plugins. So if there are any master effect plugins on your project and you want to make sure they're included, you can turn that on. If you don't, turn it off. There is one final option when exporting your project here in Logic Pro, and that is to export tracks as individual audio files or what you sometimes call stems. Now, why this is cool is that it means that you can export each individual track as an individual audio file. And that means if you want to then give that to someone else who's mixing it in Pro Tools or in GarageBand or in any other platform, they can use those audio files. They don't have to have Logic Pro if you want to import those into a different platform. So if we do that, let's hit the share button and show you how this looks once it exports all of these as individual files. The export is complete and again we've got our share sheet. Let's hit save to files again. We'll go to the iCloud drive and go to the folder that we created before for these exports. What you'll notice here is that when we save this file now, it's actually going to be a zip file with all of those WAV files saved inside. Let's jump over to files and take a look. Once again, we'll swipe up, swipe up from the bottom and go to the files app down here. Now you can see here we've got this zip file. Now this is great because we can share this using iCloud drive or OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox and then share that link with someone we're collaborating with, someone you want to send all these files to. And when they receive it and they open it up, it's going to open a folder with all of the different files. Here's every individual track. You can see the track number, the name of the track and the name of the project. And this is where naming your tracks becomes really important to make sure that when you're sharing it, it actually makes sense. So I think that that's a very cool option and something that you may want to explore if you're collaborating with someone not using Logic Pro. There you have it. Everything you need to know about exporting your projects in Logic Pro for iPad. There's a video there and there and more videos down in the description if you want to learn more about creating, recording and releasing your best music with Logic Pro for iPad.